so it's 5.01 on June 10th, 2019. This is the legislative matters meeting of that date and time. And I'm Councilor Dwight and I will be presiding. And we'll start with roll call. Um, Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Klein. Here and Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Klein has notified us that she will be here within moments. So just so that. Um, First up, we have approval of the uh, minutes from the um, meeting of May 13, 2019, and May 23, 2019, which was a joint planning board and legislative matters committee meeting. We have a motion to accept the minutes. I'll move them as a group. And I will second them as a group. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And uh, I'm going to abstain. Um, both yeah, uh, two, two out of three, which three is a quorum. Okay. Yeah. So it's not two out yeah. of four. It's so we have a quorum present. We've got okay. two, yeah, Thank whoever's you. present, particularly on accepting in minutes. So mm -hmm. if, if, you, if we're land taking, it'd be a little different issue, but we don't do that here. So, um, so there, um, the continuation of that one of those public hearings from May 13th, <coughs> as the public hearing notice was published on this on April 29, 2019. And then again, on May 6, 2019, it's required by Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 5. And that is to the hearing, the purpose of the hearing is to discuss, and there's a council client on our way, uh, item 19.025, that's an ordinance to rezone five parcels from URC to CB, and to include parcels and CBAD, referred to CR, LM, and PB on, um, so it's easy for you to say. Community Resources, <laughs> Legislative Matters, and Planning Board, because that's a whole lot of letters to do. Uh, on March 21st, uh, 2019, it has positive recommendation from the Planning Board on April 11th. Uh, Legislative Matters have opened the public hearing on uh, uh, May 13th and continue to today. And then a positive recommendation from Community Resources. So we are now in that continuation of the public meeting, let the record show the council client is the. <laughs> what, Councilor Murphy, could you pass the packet for Or is this additional one? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, um, well, actually, let me open with the fact that I wasn't here for the initial meeting. Uh, uh, Councilor Klein was presiding at the time. Uh, does anyone remember the reason for the continuation? Was it other committees? Yep. Yeah, it had to yeah. wait for the re yeah. recommendations from other committees. Well, that's right. Right. I'm sorry. Oh. <coughs> the here. Okay. But this was the five May 13th meeting. This, is the, this one was opened actually. This is not the short term rentals. Not the joint one. The, no, the, no, the, the marijuana one, we're going to call it, not the joint one because it's just it's problematic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused because you were not here with that one. That was the same hearing. You know what? Not, you were here on May 13th. I was. Yeah, I was. yeah, That's you right. were. Okay. You were gone. You, were you weren't here. I was here. Good. It was one of those blackout moments. <laughs> I try not to show up. That was up before the joint meeting. Yeah, that's right. The joint meeting before. <laughs> the, yeah, the joint meeting. Um, First for that. Okay, so it is since, it's been subsequent to that continuation of the hearing, we have received a positive recommendation from the planning board and from community services. But is there anyone who wants to discuss this in public as the hearing is still open? Does anyone have any comments? And let the record show the public consists of Callum Bish and <laughs> Councilor Tim Bish. No? Oh, well, I, I just. I, I, no, don't pass up a moment. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, well, I just want to say I've been doing lots of outreach around this. I spoke to uh, oh, Rich Matowitz and his partner on Saturday. They're the property management for the uh, Coolidge Village Condominium Association. And they were going to let people know that this change was going on because this abuts one of the properties. Um, and, but thus far, I, you know, I haven't been getting a lot of, you know, some people have been concerned. There was a woman on, um, uh, um, what's the street behind the store? 
Oh, great. Great, great. And she was concerned, uh, but uh, through discussions with Carolyn and, you know, being part of the process, she's okay with the change on historic Northampton. It's all to say that thus far nobody's too concerned about Has this. Mr. Matowitz expressed concern, thoughts, or notions? Uh, I spoke to the partner, Job? G Jobson. Yeah, Jobson. Steve Jobson. Steve Jobson. And, um, and um, he, he seemed to, you know, I told him he needed to talk to Carolyn and reach out to the city about any questions, but I wanted him to know what was going on. Um, his initial reaction was, you know, seems like it might make sense, and that's generally the, the impression. So, well, the building is the dentist's office, right? Which the is dentist's office. office. Yeah, actually, the, the, the most questions I've gotten are from Susan Krieger, who's one of three sisters who oh, owns, uh, yeah. yes, owns the, what's the former... Um, that was Augie's house. Yes, That's there's right. this lovely mansion in there set back, which is not in compliance. And there's another building that's right on the, might even be on the dentist's property. Um, that, so anyway, in terms of them, it in the long run, this probably is better for them. So in terms of future development. So, that's it. Um, Carolyn, you got anything to add, or? I mean, no, I'm just, if you have questions about it, I'd be happy to talk about it. Um, you know, it was initiated by North Historic Northampton because they wanted to have more flexibility with the, reuse, with the use of their building. Um, and, um, you know, we reached out eight months ago to um, all the property owners and just received feedback um, from uh, Megan Sullivan, who's the owner of Joe's Pizza, which is a uh, property on the market on Market Street, um, and that was all the feedback we received. But we just feel like it's a, it makes sense as the, sort of the next step to bring some of those commercial properties into Central Business District um, to allow a little bit more um, expansion of business opportunities and sort of, and it's a um, presumably a lower rent end of you know the central business district so it might help people you know get into startups yeah mm -hmm. now, were there concerns um, expressed by those that get any feedback no I mean the only person with whom I spoke was again um, Megan Sullivan and she just wanted to understand what it would mean for that parking lot that they have yeah but she felt like it made sense um, from her perspective. So that's interesting. I mean, what was it? Uh, eight, maybe nine years ago, there was some discussion initiated by the historical society about their setback, and I can't even remember what they were asking for. And there was on Graves Avenue a number of property owners who expressed concern, but I think all of them have since moved. Mm -hmm. There's been a significant shift and changeover in the folks who live on Graves Avenue. We also had the same, we had another controversial flare up that you might recall. And trying to, well, no, no, it was actually providing a right of way to the Bridge through, Street School. Yeah, through the back. And also allow the store access to storm storm management. management. Yeah, that was more involved than it needed to be. Oh, yes. But again, all the principles are, have since moved. So. And there is a requirement when there's a, uh, a border between residential and commercial district that there's a 30-foot buffer that needs to be maintained. So if, if Historic Northampton were to add buildings or do cha make changes, then there would be an evaluation of what kind of screen or, um, would be on the back side. So I think that um, certainly was um, good information for the folks who came from Graves Avenue who had questions about the rezoning. They weren't aware of that. Currently, there's a fence. Is it a hurricane fence, or is it actually something more elaborate? I can't remember. I don't remember, but there is some vegetation there. Right. So the idea is you couldn't just go in and clear cut the vegetation and call it right. a day. Right. If the historic Northampton were to add buildings or do cha make changes, then there would be an evaluation of what kind of screen or, um, would be on the back side. So I think that um, 
certainly was um, good information for the folks who came from Graves Avenue who had questions about the rezoning. They weren't aware of that. Currently, there's a fence. Is it a hurricane fence, or is it actually something more elaborate? I can't remember. I don't remember, but there is some vegetation there. Right. So the idea is you couldn't just go in and clear cut the vegetation and call it right. a day. Right. If the historic Northampton were to add buildings or do ch make changes, then there would be an evaluation of what kind of screen or, um, would be on the back side. So I think that um, certainly was um, good information for the folks who came from Graves Avenue who had questions about the rezoning. They weren't aware of that. Currently, there's a fence. Is it a hurricane fence, or is it actually something more elaborate? I can't remember. I don't remember, but there is some vegetation there. Right. So the idea is you couldn't just go in and clear cut the vegetation and call it right. a day. Right. If the historic Northampton were to add buildings or do ch make changes, then there would be an evaluation of what kind of screen or, um, would be on the back side. So I think that um, certainly was um, good information for the folks who came from Graves Avenue who had questions about the rezoning. They weren't aware of that. Currently, there's a fence. Is it a hurricane fence, or is it actually something more elaborate? I can't remember. I don't remember, but there is some vegetation there, right. so the idea is you couldn't trust. I want to help the city pursue every opportunity for affordability, alternative tax strategies, encouraging home sharing, incentives, and programs to encourage landlords to rent apartments or rooms at lower than market rate, and encouraging zoning changes that permit lower cost housing. Alex. Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. I, I think if it was five, so. two from the new batch of three from the old. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's it. All right. You Thank you, you Councillor. I'll we'll take all those up with the others as you move them. I'm off. Okay. So I get three. Is that correct? I. I think you had good, but then you also emailed. So here's who I had. I had Craig Delapena, Tess Perone Poe, and Patrick Bowen. And Tess is twice. She's a That's trooper. right. So that's so yeah, you, you may have only had four. Um